head to the city for any reason. If, if it's not an emergency, stay away from the yeah. city. Stay away from the downtown area. By all means. Uh, perhaps we can talk to Kai Simons and Kai. Can you hear me? That's a, a live picture uh, from, from Kai Simonson. I'll try once again. Uh, we've had uh, communications difficulties. Uh, I'll say once again because uh, our uh, part of our communication setup is on the top of that World Trade Center building, and that was knocked out shortly after the first plane crashed into the first building. But uh, Kai, can you hear me at all? Uh, obviously, uh, obviously, uh, I uh, having. Hey, Jim, Chris Oliver here. Yes, Ellie. Uh, I must tell you that small pieces, well, they look small from here, but they're probably much larger than I believe, are falling from the scene of the, the site of the two. Uh... All right, uh, we're having trouble uh, uh, communicating with uh, the Vico Cohen, an eyewitness, but uh, again, the uh, FBI in Washington is reporting that they have uh, had, had reports of planes hijacked before the crashes took place. So one would uh, suspect, uh, one, one would, there's not much you can do at this point. You also wonder uh, if this is indeed a hijacking, if these planes were taken over, if the people who took over these planes actually went, actually were trained pilots and did the flying into these buildings themselves, or uh, again, forced uh, these planes, forced these pilots to, to head on in. That, uh, they would, an unusual pilot who would do that. Exactly. But, but uh, uh, I'm told we have another eyewitness, Tom O'Hara, on the phone. Tom, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, can you tell me what you heard in Trade Center? Uh, Kennedy, and just a few moments ago, we had a woman named Brandy on the phone, and uh, she told us it was another loud roar, and she told us... Also, this is... Uh, Kai, can you hear me? Kai, tell us what we're looking at here. Uh, these are, or these are fighter jets. One would presume uh, to uh, prevent any further uh, attacks by planes. If they see any plane coming now, it better not be an innocent uh, commercial flight, because uh, uh, I should imagine those fighter jets are up there to intercept uh, and shoot down any plane that comes their way. No, I think everything has been grounded. That's by right. The all the airports across the country have been closed. And I heard that right now they're inspecting and really inspecting Air Force One because uh, it's been around this morning and before the point, uh, the president gets on it, they want to make sure that it's a safe plane to get on. Okay. Okay. This is Chopper 5 at Corporon and Wolf. Corporon and Wolf. The studio's requesting exact locations from you guys. I want to know where you are. Uh, Kai, can you hear me? Kai Simonson? Now we're getting audio from uh, Kai, but apparently he cannot hear me. Uh, if somebody uh, can tell him to uh, tell us what he sees from his vantage point and uh, what's going on up in the air there, we appreciate it. Yeah. It's Chopper 5, the Corporon and Wolf. Corporon and Wolf, what are you looking at? All right, he's, he's talking to uh, the assignment folks here at, uh, at Channel 5, trying to set up some sort of contact. Uh, so apparently we can hear him, but he cannot hear us, so uh, we have no way to uh, tell him to, uh, to talk to us. Well, a lot of our communication stuff is on, on top of the World Trade Center. Yeah. Yep. So I imagine all TV stations, all cell phones, all that stuff that we rely on every day are, you know, a big problem right now. There's some of the folks yeah. standing on the ground wondering... When we look up, instead of being two, there's one. Just an unbelievable scene here. It's, uh, it's, almost, uh, it's, it's, it's almost difficult to describe what's going on here. It's unbelievable. You can see that we have one World Trade Center completely engulfed in flames. The upper floor is completely engulfed in flames. World uh, Two World Trade Center has collapsed. It collapsed, uh, I guess, about 15 minutes or so ago. We had two planes, uh, as you've been hearing. Uh, one plane hit uh, one, uh, one World Trade a short time ago. Uh, I guess it's going back about 45 minutes to maybe to an hour or so ago. And then shortly after that, another plane, we actually witnessed the plane coming up the East River, and it seemed to be getting dangerously close to, uh, to World Trade, and uh, we thought that it was going to hit, and it did, in fact, hit. Uh, we saw the explosion and uh, all of the debris uh, uh, 
flowing uh, down toward the uh, lower Manhattan there, and uh, it, it's it's just incredible how right now right now uh, what we see on the ground down here is that the, the entire area of lower Manhattan right now is completely engulfed in a big black cloud of smoke. Now we uh, we did have some people down there that were uh, shooting some tape for us. Uh, they said that the entire area is completely engulfed in smoke right now. It's very very difficult to see at this point and right now our concerns in terms of uh, what we're doing up here is that the area as we understand it has been sealed off the airspace has been sealed off so uh, they are not allowing uh, people to come in and out of the airspace at this point we are able to stay here right now but no commercial traffic is being allowed to exit or enter the airspace right now and we did hear uh, some reports that there were hundreds of people that we, we did hear reports that there were hundreds of people if not more on the ground that were injured there are obviously numerous casualties involved in all of this. Now, uh, in, in terms of flying right now, uh, our concern right now is just basically keep an eye out for any planes, any suspicious planes that enter the airspace. Right now, by definition, any plane that we see enter the airspace, if it's not an American fighter jet, which we have seen, or if it's not a news helicopter or a police helicopter, is suspicious at this point, and uh, we need to get out of the out of their way. We. You were in the building? Yes. We did not see the debris hit anything uh, specific on the ground uh, because we are being kept at a distance right now. We're being kept at uh, three, four miles away. Actually, I'm being told now by my pilot we're being kept at a minimum of five mile, five mile radius of the World Trade Center. That is for our own safety and also for the safety of the people on the ground. The debris, it's, it's very, very difficult to determine which way the debris fell. It may have fallen toward the east, but I'm very, I'm really not sure at this point which way the building collapsed. Uh, it was very difficult to see. It kind of erupted in a, in a big cloud of, uh, of dust and, and, uh, and smoke at this point, so it was very difficult to see which way the debris fell, but it did appear that it may have fallen over toward the east side of the island. You can see it's, a, it's an incredible scene here. It's almost the entire southern tip of Manhattan completely engulfed in smoke at this point. And uh, we are told that it is virtually impossible to see down there. I can only imagine what emergency crews are going through at this point, not being able to see, trying to fight uh, a fire. Right now, it's just kind of a mute point. Uh, basically, uh, I would think that right now the priority is just to preserve life at this point. Uh, the fire continues to burn at the top of uh, One World Trade. Two World Trade, as I told you a little bit earlier, collapsed, and it appeared as though it was collapsing over toward the east side of the, the island, but uh, that has not been confirmed. I can't be sure of that uh, completely. But just an incredible scene out here. It's, it's really uh, almost difficult to describe. Again, the words of uh, Kai Simonson, uh, who is up in the air uh, in uh, Chapter 5. Um, he was up in the air with his camera focused on the building when the second plane rammed into the uh, World Trade Center. And it must have been uh, a... Uh, it must have been quite a sight for him and quite an experience. So Jim, I'm, I'm told Mario Bosch is, excuse okay. me, Rosanna, but I'm told Mario Bosch is on the phone from Beth Israel Hospital. Mario?